Another daily tip. Turns out there's a bunch of us that want to block out our neighbors with a privacy fence. So I found the hardware. I got a 12 foot patio at the back door of my house. And as you can see, zero privacy. You can also see that the yard is a little bit interesting. And I personally rather not look at it, so I'm going to build a fence. We have to start with our posts, and those are going right on top of the concrete with these little brackets. Now that I have those set, I'm going to put the posts in, get them level, get them plumb, get them square. Also going to put a two by four across the top just to hold everything all together. Once I knew those distances weren't going to move, then I can cut my boards to the exact length that I needed. I set up a little jig and got the exact measurement every single time, and it actually went pretty quick. Then we had to paint it. And if you have followed me for any length of time, you know exactly why I'm painting these. This Graco quick shot made this job so quick. Of course, Callan was out helping, getting his fingers in all the paint and also taping everything he could, but that was okay because we had to wait for the paint to dry anyway. So let's get the brackets. Set. This is a screenshot of the hardware I used, and I actually just ordered it through lowes.com you're going to put one screw in this l bracket so then it can spin on the center the other three holes on the other side that's obviously going to hold your material down always pre-drill pre-drilling is going to prevent your wood from splitting and if your wood is splitting it's not going to hold in this kit there's also screws provided just do not over tighten them so far so good super easy and now that we got them all put up now we got to connect them all together so they can be easily moved the kit obviously provides these little links but what we need is we just need to rivet those all together and honestly that's it it was that quick and that easy. Take a look at what this paint contractor left for us today. Do you think this looks like a mistake or do you think this is more intentional? Now with that answer, do you think we need to fire somebody today? Perhaps they just had a bad day and said, screw it, somebody else will take care of it. Maybe they had a new person come do this job and they didn't know any better, but is that my problem or not? Well, it's our property and it needs to be fixed. So yeah, it is my problem. So let's get after it. The very first thing that came to my mind was, well, they're gonna get charged for this. So as I'm having fun pulling all this tape off, I start adding things up and doing the math on it. So we're gonna use a razor blade. That's gonna end up setting them back a whole, I don't know, three cents. And sure, it's satisfying to watch and I get to make a video out of it, but it's gonna take me a whole like three minutes to do it. So what do you think? If you walk into your property and see this, what are you doing? How much do you charge? And at the end of the day, are you gonna fire them? Our garage and driveway concrete has separated and it needs to be sealed up before winter. And of course, the most important thing about any kind of job like this is the prep work. You gotta have it nice and clean. The reason that this task is so important to do prior to winter is because we don't want snow and ice getting underneath this concrete slab. If it does, it'll expand and contract and it'll break that concrete. Then of course, depending on where your garage is located, you could have issues with your foundation. I think it's best to probably just avoid that and get it done. And now, as you saw, we have a giant void there. And we can't have a giant void when we're trying to caulk some. There are literally dozens of options that you can use to fill this void. You can use a two by four, you can use a backer rod, or like me, you can use expandable. Now that's gonna take a little bit to set up, but that's okay, let that dry. And now for me, in this step, I'm simply gonna cut it out just below grade. Essentially what I'm doing is just making a nice comfy bed for this caulking to sit in. And I know that there's a smart ass in the comments already type it. This isn't the way to fix it. The best way to do it is put a new slab there. Yeah, we're definitely not gonna be installing a new $15,000 driveway, I can promise. That. Most people don't have that kind of money. And who the hell wants to spend that kind of money on a driveway anyway? And this caulking that I'm using is actually self-leveling. So you just got to get it close. If you're worried about taking care of your popcorn ceilings, all you got to do is get one of these little sanders. This sander has a little motor in the head and it also has a little vacuum attachment. So you can just run it and you don't have to worry about dust. Oh yeah. And it's incredibly satisfying another daily tip well i thought this was going to be an easy project then immediately after starting to dig the trench it starts to fill with water and that's less than ideal so we're not just burying the downspout we're also going to add a drainage tile because this yard is far too moist digging a 60 foot trench yesterday got to be kind of long but as you can see it's literally just mud there's so much moisture in here moisture and basements is not a good combination before we run into issues with that we got to run this drainage tile this tile i talk about what is it? It's a four inch pipe and it's pretty much just gonna suck all the water out of the soil. Then it'll spit it out where I tell it to. All right, let's get a full view of this trench. I started at the house and went all the way to the edge of the hill there. Yeah, all right, I know, it's crooked. Tree roots, rocks, you know the drill. I simply went around the rocks instead of trying to break them up. All right, time for the pipe. This one's perforated. You can see the holes there. That's how the moisture gets inside the pipe to then start flowing. And obviously we can't just throw that in the dirt or it'd get clogged up. So we put a giant sock around it. That will help filter the water before it gets into the pipe so it doesn't clog everything up. And and as expected, just a few minutes in, it already started flowing. Yes, Callan was out here slinging the mud too. This project is far from over. It's still quite a disaster. When you have this kind of moisture in your yard, you need to move it up on the priority list. It's Callan's birthday on Saturday, so I don't see myself getting this done over the weekend. You ever thought to yourself, gee, I wonder if that tool exists? The answer is yes. Yes, it does. And it's incredible. Doing 300 by hand wasn't an option.